and welcome to our small business webinar series, The New Online Non-Negotiables. I'm Amanda Seeger from Blue Jeans by Verizon, and I'll be leading today's discussion. This is the first of three sessions hosted by Blue Jeans by Verizon and Yahoo Small Business, now sister companies at Verizon. And today we'll be talking about how small businesses can boost brand presence by literally putting your best face forward with online and video conferencing tools. I have the pleasure of introducing our guest today, David Hepburn, Chief Creative Officer of Hepburn Creative, and Brad Dorsey, Manager of Marketing Operations of Yahoo Small Business. Welcome, guys. Thanks, Amanda. My name is Brad Dorsey, and as Amanda mentioned, I'm the Marketing Operations Manager. And I work for Yahoo Small Business, and Yahoo Small Business provides a number of tools and resources and products small business success online. We've been in business for over 25 years. We, we understand the industry and we do everything we can to provide a successful transition online if you're offline and help those existing businesses succeed. Good morning, everyone. I am David Hepburn. I'm the Chief Creative Officer at Hepburn Creative and we are a video production company in San Diego, California that exists to empower businesses, nonprofits, and people like you with the right videos that move your audience to action. Great, thank you guys. Really a pleasure hosting you here today. So we'll go ahead and get started with the first question. And I don't think I need to remind everyone that there's been a big shift from brick and mortar business to online. So this first question, Brad, is for you. What types of trends have you seen in regards to SMB online promotion? And how are entrepreneurs standing out and gaining the competitive advantage in this new online only world? Many of the things that we've been seeing are new entries into the entrepreneurial market. Individuals who might have had a side hustle, they're creating a sole hustle. That sole hustle becoming their primary source of income. Uh, that's one of the big trends is more people find themselves in the untenable position of uh, being unemployed and more people are taking advantage of the trends that already exist, but they're operating on the fringes of those trends. And what I mean by that is they're looking at the trends and saying, how can I augment that trend to make it unique? What can I do uh, to make it a bit more approachable to the average individual? As an example, um, I have a five-year-old, and every once in a while, he likes to watch those unboxing videos. I don't know if you all have seen those, but it's a big market out there right now. And what was happening is they said, okay, we're already unboxing things we buy online, so why not make money from it? And companies are spending money, sending them products to unbox because they know there's an audience there. That's what I mean by operating on the fringe of the trend. Uh, what a lot of small businesses need to be aware of when they make that transition online is that many of those businesses might be new to technology in and of itself, and there's a lot that they don't know about. So they need to plan effectively and really develop an omni-channel strategy for their transition, which includes identifying the vital components of operating in an online uh, environment, making sure their POS payment processor is capable of an online integration using a payment gateway uh, and accepting payments online. They also need to make sure that their CRM is capable of transitioning to an online audience, making sure they can provide all of the resources and capability of that CRM, for instance, analyzing online customer behaviors, patterns, and trends, uh, while creating the necessary segments, building those segments to prepare that company for growth online. Uh, building an online presence can be a really challenging process without a website. And uh, taking advantage of a service like Yahoo Small Business to provide that platform for that small business to succeed online. One thing that we've done, uh, given what's happening in the world with a number of companies is providing resources to small businesses. And we're not the only ones. We've created, pardon me, a very robust resource center that has a lot of tools and tips for small businesses to succeed during this time. Those are existing small businesses and burgeoning new entrepreneurs who are looking to get online. 
created something called a pay it forward campaign. And in that campaign, we'll give you a domain, you get a website and a host of other resources to get online and that's free for a year. Other companies are doing the exact same thing. So those are some trends and some resources that companies who are looking to make their online debut out of necessity uh, successful. <laughs> That's great, and I, I love uh, what was it the uh, the soul hustle? Yeah, that's I love that. So I actually see a question that's come in that's pretty pertinent to this discussion, and I'm going to throw it out there. Uh, Brad or David, uh, either of you can answer. So question is: Can a brand be too polished where it does not have the authenticity to allow for connection? I think really it comes down to knowing your audience. I think that because of people being individuals by nature, uh, it really, I, I don't know that we can say, yes, you can be too polished or no, you can't be too polished because the reality, and at least this is from my perspective when it comes to video, as I think about polished video and high quality video versus cell phone video. And, you know, like Brad was just saying in the moment, unboxing videos, capturing that content. Um, even those videos can run the gamut from, you know, not a lot of polish to a lot of polish, especially as it has become more mainstream. And so I think it really comes down to knowing your audience well and determining what connects with them best, because it's not enough to just put video content out or put marketing content out into the world. It's, I mean, you can do that at your own peril, <laughs> but it's really to your advantage to know your audience well and that provides a really great launching point for every aspect of marketing in your business, whether you have been online or you're just getting online because of the world we live in. You know, individuals really want to succeed online. So when you're thinking about engaging with an online business, you want that business to show tales of success, right? You want that business to show a bit of professionalism. You want that business to show a history of success. And so if it can be too polished, I don't know if a business can be too polished, but once again, it goes back to what David was saying, know your audience, know your audience. If your audience is one that's much more laid back, then you're going to probably present your product and your services in the same vein. That's a great segue into my next question to you, David. So how do you, as a small business owner, really engage and present yourself to your audience and really speak their language? That's a great question. So, you know, one of the really funny things about, at least in my background, again, as it relates to video, speaking from that standpoint, is one of the things that I think we as business owners get caught up in, and maybe you, get, maybe you feel this too watching this right now, is feeling a sense of overwhelm not only with everything going on in your business, but also having to like figure out how to do video and what equipment do I buy? And there's so just that, like if you've ever done a Google search for anything or even, you know, searching on YouTube or, you know, looking for ways to uh, better yourself in your business, there's a ton of resources out there. And so it's easy to get really overwhelmed. And it's one, one, one of the things that I have found really successful in our business is moving out of a very natural place for me of loving the gear, loving to like research equipment and wanting to buy it all and starting, and that's important too, right? Like that's not a bad thing, but what's really valuable before you let yourself run away on that train is to spend time, like I was just saying, you know, learning, identifying your audience and figuring out how to connect with them. And beyond the analytics side of knowing your audience of, you know, I don't mean demographics. What I mean is people, like if we think about it, it's easy as business owners to forget sometimes that we are engaging with just individuals in the broad, like we, we see them as audiences rather than individuals. And so when we, when we think about these individuals as the people that they are, all of us, and you can think about this in your own life and in my own life, I have problems that I want to overcome. Like Brad was just saying, we want 
to be successful as as humans. We're we're wired that way. And so, you know, success looks different for all of us. And when we think about our audience and those people that buy our products or use our services, we it's so valuable to think what do those people, what are they aspiring to become? And when we think about that aspirational identity, it helps us understand where they are now where they want to get to, how they want their friends to describe them when they're talking about them, and what's standing in their way. And so when we identify that aspirational identity first, that leads us into being able to identify the problem that they're facing. And there's a couple of different ways to look at the problem. There's the external problem that they're facing of, I like just as a very broad example, a small business saying, I would like to make more money, or you know, it's it's easy for a business to look at it that way and say, that's my problem and run it through that lens. But that ignores what the customer's problem actually is. And so you're looking for that problem that your customer is wanting to solve to achieve their own success. And that's where a lot of businesses stop. And so as, com as you think about how to stand out from your competitors, especially as it relates again to video, one of, the thing that's, one of the things that's really helpful is to move beyond that external problem that they're facing to the internal problem, which is how that problem that they're experiencing is making them feel. And so oftentimes, you know, you don't have to overthink the internal problem. Oftentimes it's, I'm frustrated by this thing that I'm experiencing, or I'm worried about my family in this way. And your service or product solves that problem for them. But people aren't buying based on that external problem. They're actually buying based on the internal problem of how it makes them feel. And so when you speak to that, that is what separates you from your competitors because most, again, businesses are just stopping at that external problem and saying, our product solves this. And it doesn't talk at all about how it makes them feel. And that's the language that we speak as people with each other. And so, you know, you don't talk a lot about your external problems that you face in your life with your friends or your family without also talking about how that makes you feel. And so when you speak to that as a brand or as a business to your customer, suddenly that resonates with them in a way that is so much more powerful. And immediately they say, oh, I'm so much more interested in you than, you're, than you know, like if they're doing other research to a competitor because you're speaking their language. And so when you know your audience that well, you're able to pivot the way that you market just in the language that you're speaking. It's not even about developing new products or services. It's about how you're communicating that to your audience. And when you can do that clearly, people automatically buy. It's not some magic bag of beans. It's just human nature. And so when we are able to connect with people that way, in a, you know, and, and again, it has to be a very authentic way. It can't be, it can't feel markety. Like when you speak to people on that level, they engage because that's who we are as people. Well said. And another question came in around that topic, uh, thinking specifically about how we engage authentically with our audiences. And uh, this question is about different demographics. So would you be able to provide different venue examples of how you connect to Gen Z with TikTok, for example? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, one of the really exciting things about video kind of at a high level before I dive into like the specific answer to that question is that we have the ability, again, no matter where you are in the um, in, in your pathway toward utilizing video as a business, whether you're just starting out or you've already got the equipment or you're, you know, you've got a full-time marketing team that's doing all the video. There's always, because of how quickly things move on the web, there's always, it feels like almost constantly there's a new, uh, there's a new platform to investigate because there's a new audience there. And like TikTok, Amanda is a great example of that. And the cool thing about the technology that's available to us today from the equipment we use that's high end, uh, you know, at Hepburn Creative, the high end professional gear we use, all the way down to the phone that you have in your pocket, you have, assuming it's a smartphone that's, you know, not the old school, true old school flip phones, uh, is that the camera that's available in those is good enough to capture content to get you started. And so you have the ability not only to capture content, but to repurpose it in a lot of different ways. And so again, it's funny, I feel like I keep coming back to the idea of knowing your audience. And the, the idea being the audience of TikTok is uh, most primarily a Gen Z audience, and they are consuming all of their content on their phones for the most part. 
of course, you know, there's outliers in, in everything, but for the most part, they're consuming content on their phone. And so as you think about that, uh, TikTok is a format that is portrait or vertical, vertical video. And so you're going to need to engage that audience differently than a video that you would put on, say, YouTube or your own website, which might have more of a chance, a, a likelihood of being widescreen. And so again, the cool thing about the technology is that you can capture one set of video and then repurpose that in all those different ways. And so you're, it's not a, necessarily a matter of laboriously creating specific content that's good for each individual audience, each individual uh, output. And of course you can do that, but I know that, you know, one of the things that we struggle with as business owners, I know I, I struggle with this. I don't know if this resonates with anyone, but the amount of time we have is finite. And if you're a small business like us, we are constantly up against that question of what do I have time for in my day and how do I maximize? Because I can't add more time for me personally. And so especially as a super small business, when you're wearing a lot of hats, that's one of the really cool things about video is you're able to take one set of content and distribute it natively in all those different outputs at, with just a little bit of extra work, you know, as you're like creating those videos. Yeah, it's a great answer. And I can think of so many creative ways to use video. Um, one example would be utilizing it uh, in a prospecting email uh, instead of just a typical text email embed the video that you recorded on your conferencing tool, um, include a virtual background that represents your brand, and there you have a great way to stand out from the crowd and really elevate your delivery. And uh, Brad, you know, I'd like to hear if you have any other creative ideas uh, that you've seen on other ways to use video other than just uh, through typical meetings. It, it's really interesting the way that companies are using video I, I coined a phrase for this uh, for this webinar called virtual marketing engagement, and you won't find that phrase anywhere else online. But the way in which video is being engaged with from a from a marketing lens or from a professional lens, from a business to consumer or business to business lens is really interesting. Companies are using video to humanize themselves, as David was saying, know your audience, and also. During this time, uh, we're seeing so many companies embracing uh, social issues. Uh, they're 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 um, they're being champions of various social issues, and they're using video very effectively. They're allowing their customers to use their own video to propel the company's message, and that's huge. And then what the company does is they take that and they use that for marketing purposes sometimes. So video. Uh, is definitely being used for a variety of different audiences in a variety of different ways. Um, a lot of companies are using video for reputation building. They're using video for uh, different documentaries uh, that they put their name on. They're using video for demonstrations. And they're using video on their websites to further draw in individuals from a variety of different backgrounds. You might see more minority uh, more minorities being used in video these days as companies try and outreach to various segments of society. So it's it's really, really interesting how various companies will embrace, for instance, TikTok. They'll embrace these new Gen Z uh, specific uh, forums uh, for video to try and draw on that audience. So that's that's my take on what's been happening lately. Yeah, absolutely. And if I can tag onto that real quick, Amanda, of, of what Brad's just saying, I think one of the things that's really important as you do that and as you engage those audiences, I think what everyone, no matter who you are in the demographic that you fall into, everyone's looking for authenticity. No one likes to be sold to and no one likes to feel like you're communicating with them so that you get something out of it. And so when you're able to market, especially through video, as, a, as a, like Brad said, it's humanizing your company or your brand. Because at the end of the day, it's really, you're really just people at the company speaking with people as the customers, right? There's this weird like monolithic brand identity that 
sometimes gets in the way. But at the end of the day, we're really just people communicating with each other. And so when we're able to face to face do that in a way that uh, connects with people through video, it's really helpful. And the cool thing is, especially through this year that we've been through, as we've moved to work from home and as we've moved out of all of the norms that we had before into like this period of, what is it now, like six, eight, 10 months of rediscovery of how do we do business with these new constraints, the cool thing I think is that everyone is a little bit more forgiving. And so there's no, you don't have to worry like if you're doing it well enough to begin, it's valuable just to begin. And you're going to start, you may not see like the, the return and the results that you want. You're not gonna get necessarily all of the views on your videos or all the clicks that you want. But by starting, you are creating a, a, a way for you to communicate with your customers and for your customers to communicate with you that didn't exist before. And I can tell you from our own experience at Hepburn Creative, the huge value in that. And uh, the example that we have in our business is one of the things that we realized over the last year that we needed to do is not everyone, and I'm sure you've experienced this in your businesses too, is not everyone's ready to purchase right away, right? And so when they come to your site, like Brad said, if you don't have a website, a good website is so important because it needs to function not just as your digital billboard for your business, it should function as a member of your sales team. Because when people come to their come to your website, they are not only looking around at like who you are and what you offer, but over time, the goal is to just get them ready to buy. And that's again, gonna save you time later to say, I, I just want, I'm ready to purchase. I don't need to talk to a human. How do I do that? And uh, for the people that aren't, as they're making that journey, one of the things that's super valuable is to have a, what, what we call a transitional call to action. And so rather than just the buy now button on your site, you have a secondary button that says, you know, or while you're thinking, you don't, you don't actually say this, but it's like while you're thinking about buying now, you can also download this resource that's valuable for you. And so what we did at Hepburn Creative is we created a five video email series of five videos in five emails over five days that you can sign up for on our website. If you go to heprincreative.com, you can do it right now and see what this is like. And it provides, it puts a, an email a day in someone's inbox with five videos that are purely about how can I provide you value? How can I help you make your video calls better? And what that allows you to do is you are then top of mind every day in someone's inbox and because the video content is valuable to them, it is something that they click on and it's something that they watch. And so in a world of, you know, I am not an email campaigns wizard, but I know that the open rates and click rates in email marketing is pretty low. Like sadly, in the world of being bombarded with all these emails that we get every day, the click through rates are, are low. And what's exciting about video is not only is it valuable for your customer, it actually, like the statistics of when you include videos that people can click through to, that at, at least the way we do it at Hepburn Creative is they click the video link in the email and it takes them to a custom page that we've created on our site. It puts people back on our website again and it allows them to watch something that's valuable. And so we're building that trust. We're building that humanization with our customers through providing value to them. And at no point in that do we say, and we wanna sell this to you. It's really just, we wanna provide value to you because the reality is we understand, especially in video, we are not a good fit for every company that needs video in their business. We're a good fit for a lot of companies and we can help you elevate to the next level your video that you're producing for your company and we can help you identify your customer's story and help you connect better and engage better. But if we can just help you get started, we want to do that. And so through that trust building, then again, it's just top of mind, top of mind, top of mind that it's like, oh yeah, Hepburn Creative provided that resource for us. And you can do that in your business. And when you do, if you are if you do like what we did with this video series, I have just been so amazed at what our open rates and click-through rates were. Because you as a, as a customer, you signed up for it and you're like, oh yeah, I asked for this. And so it's not just me coming in as a cold call email saying, buy our product or buy our service. It's like, hey, remember this thing you signed up for? Here's that resource you asked for. And, and it just builds that trust. It builds that humanization.
Yeah, and, and if I can provide an addendum to that, you know, when customers are looking to go online, you mentioned this earlier, Amanda, they may not have all of the know-how to do so. And so, just to piggyback on what David said, on trust building, as companies, we're solving a problem. We don't wanna come at it as, look at this fancy new product we have for you. We're solving a problem. You may not know how right. to build a website. We have people who can do that for you. You need to run your business. You don't need to worry about building a website. And that's where we can come in and meet that need. And uh, so many companies, uh, as the asker of one of the questions had mentioned, how do you make sure authenticity is key? You focus on the problem statement and not necessarily, here's a solution, here's a solution, here's a solution. You're having an issue yeah. with your website, you wanna create it, you don't have the know-how, we can help you do that. We can help you reclaim your time um, by doing that specific challenging thing you find challenging. And you know we have some individuals who can build at night and day for you, but whatever you find challenging, you can come to us and we can say, well, we have the answer to that problem. So I wanna make sure we have time for Q&A, but before we move on there, I was hoping, David, you could provide a couple basic tips that folks on the call could use right away to improve their video, whether it's on their next meeting with investors, for social media promotion, customer appreciation, uh, really anything to help boost the brand and elevate their business. Absolutely. So right off the bat, the really exciting thing that I find for no matter, again, where you are in your business, whether you're just getting started with video, whether you have some prosumer equipment already, whether you've upgraded and you're already well on your way with higher end gear, the, the reality is what matters more than the equipment you buy is the technique that you use when you're shooting the videos. And so three areas where that really matters, just kind of high level, are the audio quality, the lighting, and uh, the camera or like the camera angle, basically. And so if we look at camera angle first, one of the one of the easiest ways that right now in your office or at your home that you could make a better video or better video call, your next one's going to be so much better, is to change the the camera height or camera position of your computer or phone or whatever you're doing that video call with. Because if you've been on a video call anytime recently, I don't know any of us who are spending any time on video calls these days, right? Oh wait, we all are is that there are people every day on our calls that have their laptop down on a table or you know away from them in the room. And so what you wanna do is you wanna, for most of us, raise that camera height up. And because when it's down on a table, by just by nature, we're looking up your, your audience or your customers or the people on your call are looking up your nose at you. And so it's this really weird like, can I see something in there? Is that like, oh gosh. And your audience starts to lose focus on what you're actually talking about. Uh, and so it's all, again, you get that authority back just by changing that camera height. And another thing that you can do is you can choose to uh, be thoughtful about your lighting. And a lot of us just, you know, don't have video lights. You know, we of course do as a video company, but even right now on this webinar, one of the light sources that I'm using is right over here, this light source that's coming at me from here is a window. And so don't discount the benefit of natural daylight in your video calls. And so if you uh, have a window, what I would do is I would place your camera or computer or again, phone or whatever you're doing for your video calls and face face the window. And uh, that way the light source is in front of you, lighting you well, versus having you know that window in the back. And again, I'm sure you've all seen this where someone has a window behind them and either they're silhouetted or the window's like the brightest thing you've ever seen and the camera's often like going back and forth between the two. So just by turning around and having that light source in front of you helps improve your videos immensely. And you don't have to buy anything to make that possible. 
Uh, and then the last thing is audio. And uh, one of the really great things, again, is there's a, a, a whole ton of great uh, companies out there that make audio equipment from super high-end professional gear down to very affordable things that you can buy. And then there's you know all the brands that you've never heard of that are out there that you can Google and buy the cheaper version of. All of those are great places to start. Again, at, uh, it, it's just about getting started. And so you will you know, upgrade your equipment as you go. So don't feel like you have to buy the, the latest, greatest, best just to get started. And so when you do that, you want to get a microphone that can be closer to you. And so for a lot of us, that's like a little lapel mic that would clip to your collar. Or you can get a, what we call a shotgun mic or a directional microphone that is just, you can put closer to you uh, just off camera versus the camera that's, or versus the microphone that's built into your camera that's across, you know, the room from you or across the table from you. And so like for us, that's what we're doing in this case. I've got a microphone right here that's just off camera that's providing that audio. And so it's better, it's a better source than what you would hear if it were just built into the camera. I've got my work cut out for me. <laughs> Brad's like, I'm just going to raise my computer up here. And... <laughs> no, it's right. No. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and not, not to, you know, not, it's certainly not like a personal shout out or anything. But again, if you, if you want to delve more into like those kind of tips and tricks, we have that available on our site. Uh, at, you know, after this, if you want to sign up for that, it's free. You can, I, I walk you through those step-by-step uh, step over the course of a few days. Thank you. We'll make sure to include that link for follow-up. We'll move on to Q&A next. So if you have a question you'd like to ask the speakers, please submit it now in the Q&A. And the first question here is from Sarah. If we create videos, what are the best ways to get that video in front of our audience? Yes, you can post to your website and YouTube, but are there other ways? So David, I think it would be great to hear your experience as a small business owner. And then Brad, um, great to hear your opinion based on trends and best practices from uh, the Yahoo small business side. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll take that first, Brad, if, if, if you're cool with that. Um, I, as a personal uh, story, one of the things that has been a challenge, we've, we've, we started our business in 2008. So we've been at this for 12 years. And one of the things that we have constantly asked ourselves, probably for the last five to 10 years of that, is, um, you know, I, I think one of the things that's easy, especially as a small business owner, is to feel like you're constantly questioning yourself or you're constantly questioning the success of your company and where you're headed and what you're doing and is this the right way and I don't feel like I'm reaching my audience and the what we have said what we've asked ourselves for years is we know the money is out there we are not doing we need to do a better job at finding our audience and showing up for them when they're interested in buying the types of things that we have to offer. And so again, it comes back to Sarah, knowing your audience. And when you know your audience, you know where they show up. You know, if, you're, if, if, you, if your audience is um, like an older crowd that maybe is retiring, they're probably not gonna be on TikTok as much as like a Gen Z audience would be. Uh, and so it's just thinking about like, again, the cool thing about video is that you can repurpose it across a ton of different platforms and marketing avenues. And so you, the, you, the video you're creating as a webinar can be used in an email campaign. Like you can cut it up and use it in an email campaign. You can, you know, put bite-sized snippets and sound bites of that on different social media. So it, it comes back to knowing your audience and then just providing useful content to them where they're at. That is so true. Um, another thing you can do, you know, is utilize the resources that a lot of, that you know a lot of people are already utilizing. Social media is a big one, a big, big one. And like I mentioned earlier, a lot of companies are doing this in a great way. They're using some of their customers to provide video to propel their company's products and services. And you can absolutely do that. You can have different contests. You can have a number of different ways to engage your audience and engage your customers so that they can engage your audience for you. Instagram is another excellent resource. We see so many companies using Instagram, encouraging their customers to create their own user stories. 
for those companies to utilize in their own uh, campaigns and whatnot. So there's a lot of platforms. David said exactly the right thing. You have to know your audience. You have to know where they are and where social animals we really, really are. And as being such, we use a lot of social referencing. People look at reviews to see what's a good find, what's a good purchase, what's a good company. You can use video in your reviews. All of those are wonderful places for video that can be very effective. Absolutely. And Brad brings up a great point. I just want to, you know, put an exclamation point on the idea of allowing other people to speak on your behalf as a company. One of the most powerful tools that we have that I think is pretty well known is the idea of social proof of hearing other people say, yes, I found that useful. And so one of the best things you can do for your company are, you know, you're for a lot of us, we're already having people write reviews for our businesses and put them on, you know, social media or put them on search engines as, you know, searchable reviews or review sites. But one of the really amazing things, you know, as people, we hate to, we hate to be marketed to, like I said. And so when we, when we hate being marketed to, we don't like to hear companies tell us about themselves. But what is the sneaky backdoor into that, being able to do that as a company, is allowing someone, your customer, existing customer, to speak on your behalf. And so when you let, you can talk about yourself all day long to your audience when you let someone else do it for you. And when you create a testimonial video with a client, what's really powerful, I think, is, and, and we, we do this a lot with, with small businesses, is we say, as much as we know you want to be there to handhold this client through a testimonial, it's better for you to not be there. As a video company, we are going to have your back as a, as a business to go and capture this testimonial in an authentic way where the customer doesn't feel stressed about saying exactly what they're supposed to in front of you. And then we create an authentic testimonial video that again, you can use on social media, on your website, in you know a lot of different avenues in, in email campaigns to say, look at what other people, look at the success, again, coming back to what Brad said at the start of this, looking at the success that people want to experience and seeing it someone else, then they're gonna be so much more prone to sign up for your service or buy your product because they want that too. Thank you guys. Uh, last question and then we'll wrap it up. Do you have any suggestions as to how long a video should be to get the most engagement? Great question. So the answer is, again, <laughs> <laughs> you have to know your audience. Uh, and the the reason why is that there are certain audiences that are really interested in watching long form content. It you, I think like even two or three years ago, the advice was always, oh my gosh, attention spans are getting shorter. Your videos have to be shorter. They have to be engaging and then you have to let them go. And you know, social media has been a big part of that because it's true, our attention spans are not that long. But the fact of the matter is long form content, thanks to documentaries and, you know, the ability to stream tons of content over a tons, tons of different platforms is that longer form content also engages. And so I think Brad mentioned this earlier, but as a business, if you are interested in creating long form content or having long form content created on your behalf and you can kind of be the producing you know sponsor of it there's value in that too so it, it really depends on where you're going to be uh, distributing the videos for somewhere like and some social media have you know limitations as to how long a video can be so like as an example on twitter at least today, the the time limit for the, the majority of us is two minutes and 20 seconds. So for the most part, I try to keep content under that as, as it relates to small businesses using social media. Uh, that I think is, you know, kind of the upper end of how long. And so I think usually 30 to 60 seconds is good. 90 seconds can be good. But, you know, it again, it just depends on where you're distributing that content because you know, an unboxing video isn't necessarily going to be 30 seconds. It's going to be, you know, I don't know, Brad, maybe you can speak to, I haven't watched an unboxing video too recently, but I, you know, I know oftentimes those videos are longer than just that 30 seconds or a minute. Absolutely. Um, it goes back to knowing your audience. You know, a lot of videos that are created these days from companies to 
uh, prospects tend to be two to three minutes. And David, you can correct me. Uh, but, you know, it is really due to the fact that so much content we consume uh, really is shortened content. We're used to commercials. You know, we have a microwave society. If my coffee takes longer than two minutes to get prepared, I'm done, right? So, <laughs> so you know, short attention span theater. And you have to grab yeah. the attention early on, and hopefully you can keep it. And hopefully yeah. we've, we've done that with this webinar. That's, that's, that's my hope. Yeah. I think an interesting add-on to that is, is as, as you're thinking about how long your content should be, one of the things you said, Brad, just triggered this for me, is it depends on where in the relationship cycle your customers are with you as a brand or as a business. Because if someone is brand new to your company, they aren't going to invest 5, 10, 20 minutes to watch longer form content with you. They're just not. But if it's content that's interesting to them, you start them off shorter, and then the longer time goes on, you have you have more relational capital to be able to spend with these customers to say, are you interested in this? Are you interested in this? And so your content doesn't all have to be the same length. It can be varying lengths depending on where your customers are and who your audience is. Thanks, David. So uh, any last words from you or Brad? I would say I, as a business owner, I, I just want to encourage you that it's really hard in, especially in the world we're in now, where in, in addition to how chaotic and busy our businesses were before, there's just this added layer of complexity now of learning a new, a new way, learning a new way to get online, learning a new way to interact with your customers through video. And so if that's you and you're feeling really overwhelmed by all those options, I just as, as a fellow business owner, we would love to be a resource for you in that. And so if, you know, even if you're not ready to hire video, Hepburn Creative to create video content for you, what we can also do is, you know, through a video chat together, just kind of walk through what you're thinking, help you identify who your audience is. One of my favorite things is really helping companies know their audience in a way, again, that goes beyond just knowing demographics, knowing the analytics of your audience, but really identifying who they want to become and how their their problem is making them feel. And when you do that, not only is that going to be successful through the videos that you create or that you partner with us to create for you, but it's going to help you in every aspect of your business. And it really is transformative because we saw that with our own. Yeah. And, you know, as a small business, when you're talking about building your brand with video, building your brand in general, so much of that really comes to what your online presence looks like. And, yeah. you know, at Yahoo Small Business, we love helping companies succeed online. Uh, we love to, to hear stories about companies that, that have been a success because those successful stories are brand builders. They really are. And so when you're thinking about taking your company online, if you're offline or if you already have an existing business online, maybe revamping your website, um, thinking about your online reputation is something that you need to do as well. And a Yahoo small business, we love helping companies with all of the above. Uh, we have a wonderful reputation resource product. It's called Local Works. Uh, we have so many other products and services available for companies to help them succeed online. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day, making sure that you're doing everything you can to number one, serve your customer, be there for your customer and help your customers succeed too, uh, regardless of what industry you're in. And we'll help you be there and do that with uh, Yahoo Small Business. Thank you. Wonderful. We'll make sure to include the links to all the resources mentioned uh, in the follow-up email. So once again, thank you, David. Thank you, Brad. And thank you, everyone, for attending. And we hope to see you at the next one.